Hello, and welcome to the webinar today, the retirement webinar. This is entitled The Road to Retirement. We're so glad to have you here with us today. I'm Cheryl Hatcher. I'm a Senior Benefit Plan Specialist, and presenting with me today is Frank Creviston. And we are delight, delighted to be able to bring you this webinar today. First of all, we have a couple of things we want to just point out to you. First of all, this uh, webinar is being recorded. And at the end of the week, we will send out a copy of the recording link, as well as the PDF of these slides that we are presenting today. And then I also wanted to mention that there is a questions box that's in your GoToWebinar toolbox. We highly encourage you to enter your questions in that toolbox. Now, as of right now, uh, Frank and I are here, and we, our other two benefit educators are actually on virtual webinars right now. So we don't have anybody to man that question box, but please still put your questions in there. And by the end of the week, we will answer your questions that you've sent to us. All right, and also just to let you know um, that, um, what's our third? our third topic for our um, our go-to-webinar presentation today. I forgot. Was there any PDFs on I the uh, toolbar? I think we mentioned the PDFs. Okay. Um, but I think, I think so. I think that's the housekeeping done right That's the housekeeping right done. All right. So we're all good, Frank? We're all good. Charles. All right, good. So let's go on and let's talk about our road to retirement. Let's talk about today's agenda. We're going to be talking about the 2023 retirement process. So here you are. You're here. You're retiring. Let's talk about what you need to go through. Frank is actually going to be talking about the retirement plans, and I'll talk about UMPIP, but we're going to talk about those and how they pertain to you. We're going to talk about the life stage retirement income. Again, Frank will be talking about that and how this pertains to you and any tax consequences there may be. Housing allowance, that's always a big one that we uh, want to talk about and uh, mention to you during this time in retirement. It's a little bit different than when you're active, so when you retired, here you are. We want to make sure that you're aware of that and the wonderful benefit that it is to you. And I'll bring it home with the participant resources that are available to you. We always want you to know that there are people here to help. Us here at, Web, at Westpath at, and at other places, we'll talk about all of those, but please know you always have someone there. All right, let's talk about that retirement process. All right, let's get packing. This is all going to be travel themed for this webinar today, so let's get packing. What is this going to look like? Well, our first, um, um, first sheet that we have and this is in the handout section that we have that I neglected to talk about in the beginning. In the handout section, there are five documents. And this is the first one that we have. It's called Retirement Checklist. And this Retirement Checklist was actually um, brought to our attention uh, from all of you. We got this idea from you, from feedback from you. So print this one out. This is a great one for you to, to go through and understand what you need to do when, okay? So the next thing we have is you probably already have gone through some of these things already. You've notified your board, notified your bishop and cabinet, but maybe one thing you didn't think about when you're thinking about retirement is, hey, maybe I should make another call to EY. That's something else that you can do, and that's part of that checklist. So I like checklists are great. I like to be able to cross things or check things off myself. So hopefully you can do the same with yours. When you go through your retirement checklist, you want to make sure that you verify all of your personal information. It's easier to do that now rather than later when you're actually commencing your benefits. Also make sure that your spouse's information is correct. Some of those benefits that you sign up for, they could pertain to your spouse as well. So let's make sure that spouse's information is correct. And again, because these benefits um, are going to be coming um, from us, we want to make sure that that clergy service record is accurate. If you notice any discrepancies in that report, you want to make sure you notify your annual conference and make sure those are corrected prior to actually uh, commencing benefits. All right, so now let's say you've gone through all of this information and you have checked all your boxes and you can now go into um, your retirement account, accounts, account summary, and you see this happy, happy man with the glasses. 
this is where you're actually going to start choosing your benefits should you want to do that. Again, what you can do is you can review and update your LifeSage investment management profile, see if you are still aggressive or maybe moderate or conservative in your accounts. Maybe now that you're going to be taking them, maybe you want to switch to conservative or even moderate, whichever is best for you. And then also run a benefit projection. Now again, this is something that you can run at any time. And it's not necessarily what you're actually going to get in retirement, but it's going to be a great forecast to let you know what you could be expecting. All right. So now I've given you all of this information um, and about all of this checklist information, but now where do I go and do that? How do I do that? Well, I hope you are all yelling at me through your uh, cameras and saying, benefits access, I need to go to benefits access, and you will be correct. So please go to benefits access and to be able to update all of this information. You, there's a couple ways you can go out and do that. You can actually go out to benefitsaccess.org and simply click and get in there that way. Or the way that I like to go in there is actually go through westpath.org and then in that uh, upper right hand corner, there's a box saying benefits access. From there, usually that way, then I can see many, some other information that I might have missed going to the westpath.org website. All right, so now I've given you all information regarding the retirement aspect, but maybe you're questioning, what about my retiree health benefits? Well, that's a great question. Would love for you to be able to check in with your annual conference regarding that because there might be some that have different uh, clarifications or different provisions. So we want you to be able to check in with them regarding the health benefits. All right, so now we've gone through the first part. We're now going to take it over to Frank, who's going to talk about the retirement. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Path. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you today. We're going to talk about the West Path retirement plans. And as Cheryl has indicated, one of the things you want to be doing through this checklist is to ensure that you are taking advantage of the benefit access platform to confirm all of your information, your personal information, your spousal information, beneficiary designations, etc. But also, please note that when you begin to make your elections to receive your benefits in retirement, you will be going through the benefit access system to make those elections. Now, in the lower right-hand corner, you can see that we have a West Path retirement team. We're going to touch on them again later on in this presentation. They are there to help and support you, but really establishing and setting up these elections is going to go through benefit access. Also, please note that for you to begin receiving assets and your, your, your retirement income in the beginning of July, you have to make the elections as to how you want to receive your benefits from the plans that are available to you. You want to make those elections by Friday, June 30th, 3 o'clock Central Time. Anything that is there on your record will be picked up and processed to begin payments for you. If you do not make any elections or if you choose to not make any elections by deferring your accounts, simply do nothing. Nothing will happen. But if you want to receive your benefits, please have them in place. And what we would say is have them in place by June 15th, June 20th, put something on your calendar just to ensure that you have set things up the way you want them to be set up. So please don't wait. Now to speak a little bit about <clears throat> the provisions for retirement as it relates to the book of discipline. For those who are retiring under the normal retirement, that is age 65 or 40 years of service. And the word or is the key word there. If you're 62 but you have 40 years of service, you can retire under the normal retirement provision. But if you only have, you're 65 but only have 15 years of service, you can still retire under the normal retirement provision. There's an early retirement provision of age 62 or 30 years of service. Again, or is the key word. And we're going to talk a little bit about early retirement when we talk about the clergy retirement security program because there is some considerations to be made around early retirement and that benefit. <clears throat> there is a mandatory retirement of age 72 and a 20-year retirement rule. So someone can, with who's age 55, for example, with 20 years of service, can retire and go into retirement appointment, 
But please note, as it relates to your employer retirement plans, you still wait until you are age 62 early retirement before you begin to elect and receive those benefits. So now we can talk about income and where it will come from. We have our West Path plans. On the left-hand side here, you can see what I would consider to be the employer-provided retirement plans. The current employer retirement plan is the CRSP. There's the ministerial pension plan. And then for some of you, you may have the pre-82 or minister's reserve pension fund. And we'll go through those, and then Cheryl will walk us through the UMPIP. So we're going to be begin with the CRSP plan. This plan is a very unique arrangement and is that it is a, co a combination of both a defined benefit and a defined contribution account balance plan. The defined benefit is really the driver of the plan and so we're going to begin to speak about that component of CRSP first. It's more involved. It's not highly complicated. We're going to review with you the, the annuity elections that you will have. We're going to review with you COLAs, annual cost of living adjustments, those elections that you can make. But the important thing to walk away from this slide is once you've made your elections for the annuity and the COLA percent and you go into pay status, so it's early July, your elections for CRSPDB are irrevocable. They stay in place. <clears throat> the defined benefit is not a balance. It's a formula benefit. It's math. We're multiplying three factors together. There's no market activity that you see that really impacts the outcome of this formula benefit relative to the defined benefit benefit. We look at the denominational average compensation. We multiply that against a factor, either 1.25% or 1%, and we'll get into why, and then credited service during that period of time. So again, while you're looking at your account on benefit access, you want to make sure your clergy service record is correct because we will use years of service to calculate your benefit. What is the DAC? The Denominational Average Compensation, DAC or DAC. If you haven't been able to tell already, we love our acronyms in the pension world. So DAC, DAC, Denominational Average Compensation. And here actually the words are telling us what's going on. We're getting all of the compensation for full-time appointed clergy. We're getting the number of full-time appointed clergy. We come up with an amount. We do it a little bit in advance. So for this year, we know for the retiree class of 2023, we're looking at $76,221. But we already know for those retiring next year that the DAC will be $78,292. Now the factor that is used. When the CRSP plan first rolled out in 2007, the retirement factor was 1.25%. General Conference of 2012 reduced it to 1% effective January 1st, 2014. So you can see the time frame, 07 to 13, 1.25%, then 14 plus. For today's purposes for this webinar, June 30th, 2023. And now the credited years of service, your clergy service record. We're assuming full-time appointed throughout these time periods, January 1, 2007, December 31, 2013, seven years of service, 1-1-2014 1, 1, through June 30th of this year, 9.5 years of service. But now we have what we need to do the math. On the left-hand side, we're doing that first time period, 07 through 13, the DAC 76221, then 1.25% is the factor, seven years, full-time appointed. You come up with an amount. We divide by 12. You can see that 556. Then on the right-hand side, it's the second time period, 1114 to June 30. Now the factor is 1%. It's 9.5 years. We come up with an amount, divide by 12, and you can see $603 per month. And then we simply add them together. So here in this example, it's $1,159 per month. But we're not necessarily done. What will impact the amount that you're going to receive after this initial calculation gets done and then we begin to annuitize that amount? These are the decisions that you will make. If you are married, decisions around the surviving spouse benefit that you will receive, you're going to hear about those. Or single life, there are some options for single life individuals as well. You're going to receive or you're going to elect to receive 
an annual cost of living adjustment, or COLA, you will choose what amount that will be, and that will get attached to that annuity and stay with that annuity throughout your lifetime. But it will have an impact on the amount that you receive depending upon the COLA percent that you choose. And then early retirement. With early retirement, I had shared earlier that there is some considerations around the early retirement provision of CRSP. You have the normal retirement age of age 65, early retirement age 62 or 30 years of service. We have an example here of a clergy person retiring exactly two years early, age 63, does not have 40 years of service. We calculated the amount, we came up with $1,159. However, the way the early retirement provision works is for each month of early retirement, there's a half percent reduction in the amount of benefits that you receive. So 0.5 reduction in the amount of benefit you receive. That translates to 6% per year. In our example, it's 12% reduced. So that 139 comes out of that 1159. And for someone early retirement, that would be $1,020 per month as their benefit going into retirement. You choose a COLA percentage, it will go up by that percent. So that is how the early retirement provision is structured. I would like to note though that for those whose monthly cash flow, annual cash flow is such that you can defer until you attain age 65, you're able to do that. But just note that the calculation is gonna be as of the year you retire. So this year, 2023, the amount will still initiate at $1,159. The COLA you elect will stay with that and go forward. So <clears throat> your years of service stay the same. The DAC for 2023 remains the same. <clears throat> now we can talk about the defined contribution component of the CRSP. It's an account balance. It's a supplemental account balance that the employer is providing to you to help supplement your retirement income. And the way it works is 2% of your compensation, automatic required, non-matching contribution goes into the account, and hopefully all of you are participating in UMPIP. You're participating in UMPIP, you get an additional 1% contribution, so that's that 3% that's going into the account balance. As it relates to investing, the account balance, the CRISP DC, you can either self-manage your investments and choose what funds within the Westpath family of funds you want to use and allocate your contributions to, or you can use Life Stage Investment Management, which is a program where you're asking Westpath to tailor and manage for the long haul the investment allocation of your account balances. We'll touch on that again later. It is available to you as cash distributions. It's an account balance in retirement. It becomes available to you. You can roll it over to UMPIP. We recommend that people do that because the UMPIP plan, as, as Cheryl will share with you, has more options and flexibility for you through retirement to determine how, when, and how much retirement income you want to receive. Now, you can also roll it over to another retirement plan. It's perfectly able to do that we just want to put a little yellow flag of caution because you want to remember your housing allowance tax exclusion. So if you want to roll the money over to someplace else, first you want to make sure you have enough remaining to cover your housing allowance. And second, wherever it goes, you want to ensure <clears throat> that they can also declare eligible for housing allowance the income you receive. And in commercial vehicles like Fidelity and Vanguard, chances are that's not going to be able to happen. So it's available to you. Just be mindful of the housing allowance tax exclusion. <clears throat> Cheryl will talk about required minimum distributions at age 73 and how that may impact the timing and receipt of your distributions. And <clears throat> with your account balances, anything that is remaining in your account balances upon your death, you and your spouse's death, will go to your named designated beneficiaries. So again, check benefit access, your beneficiary designations, other things you have in a household, life insurance policies, your spouse's retirement plans, just make sure your beneficiary designations are in good working order heading into your retirement. So that's the account balance plan. The next plan that we'll talk about is the Ministerial Pension Plan, or MPP. And through this conversation, we're going to talk about the annuities that are available to you and how the COLA can be applied. The Ministerial Pension Plan was the plan that was in place 
prior to the CRSP plan. It was a percentage of your compensation was provided to you as a contribution into an account invested in the Westpath family of funds and invested and growing over the course of this time. So it is an account balance plan. It's invested using life stage investment management. Everyone in MPP, we're using life stage investment management to manage the account to get you to, into, and through retirement with your MPP benefits. And what does it become later at retirement? I am glad you asked. Going into retirement, you make the election to receive benefits from MPP. 65% of your account balance, that market value going from June 30th, July 1st into retirement, 65% of that will provide for you a lifetime annuity. You, you and your spouse cannot outlive that annuity. An annuity is simply a series of payments, lifetime annuity, payments that last through your lifetime and if married, you and your spouse's lifetime. But there's that 35%. That 35% is an account balance. It's an account balance that, again, we will recommend rolling it into UMPIP because UMPIP is where you have your most flexibility in terms of deriving income, but that's an account balance for you to determine how you want to use that in retirement. So together, we have 65, 35, we're back to 100%. We have the annuities on the one hand. We're about to review six annuity choices for you and the cost of living increases. And that 35%, you have options and it can be a cash distribution if that is what you so choose to do. So we're gonna look at the forms of annuities that you can choose from. All of the annuity types provide lifetime income to you. You cannot outlive the annuities you will receive. The CRSP defined benefit annuity, the ministerial pension plan annuity, you cannot outlive that. And if you are married, you and your spouse cannot outlive that. But please note, once you, you and your spouse are gone, from here, part of the benefits, there's no benefits provided to anyone else. So we'll begin looking at the annuities, the life and survivorship annuity options, and you can see that there are three. And these apply to both the MPP and CRSP annuities. We have what's called the life and survivorship annuities. We have a life in 100%, life in 85%, life in 70%. You go into retirement, you choose a life in 70% annuity, you pass before your spouse, your spouse would receive 70% of what you were receiving at that time, with whatever COLA percent you attach, will continue to go with that until your spouse passes. As you can see here, the higher the survivorship percent that you choose, the lower the initial amount to you, but the greater amount that goes to this contingent annuitant, technical term for someone like a surviving spouse. So the life in 70, 1,166, 1, but the 816 is the 70%. 100, you're both receiving the same, and that 85 kind of splits the difference between the two. So this is really where, show reference using EY Financial Planning Services, you can take advantage of them, kind of model what works best for you, you and your household, in terms of what annuity form you want to choose going into retirement, as well as what the future will look like relative to income for the surviving spouse. We have three single life annuity options as well. We have a life only, a life with a five year certain, and a life with 10 year certain. So we'll take a step back, life only. It's a single life individual, we're paying that only that one life throughout the course. You can see that's a greater amount, 1,325. That person passes away, no further benefit to anyone else. But we do provide flexibility to individuals who wanna take a single life annuity, but may have somebody in their life that's important to them that if something was to happen to them tragically early on in retirement, a benefit can be provided to that individual or individuals for a period of time. So let's say you choose a five-year period certain annuity. You go into retirement. That first few years, you get in your annuity. You pass away in the third year. The last two years, up to that five years, that named designated beneficiary will receive that benefit. Ten years certain, same idea. You're going through your retirement, you get to year seven, you pass away. For the remaining three years, that named designated beneficiary will receive that benefit. But after either the five-year or 10-year window is surpassed, no further benefit to anyone. If you outlive the five-year or the 10-year upon your election and you pass, no further benefit to anyone. So we have the six forms of annuity, life and survivorship annuities. 
the three single-life annuity options. You can see this on Benefit Access now. You can run your projections. But we assume we have your intents to retire date on the system. You can find the man with the glasses and start looking at your elections and how they apply to you. <clears throat> the second piece is the COLA, the annual cost of living adjustment. And does this impact your benefit? Yes, it does. And here's an illustration as to how that can occur. Well, first, I'll explain what the COLAs are. For the ministerial pension plan, you can choose a 0% COLA. For CRSP, it has to be a minimum of a 2% COLA. But in both plans, you can go 3%, 4%, or 5%. So here's the illustration of how a different COLA percent can impact the amount of benefit you'll receive and how, what the benefit can be later on. So we're going to start with an example of somebody who's taking a life and 70% annuity with a 2% COLA. You can see they're coming out with you know, the numbers on the left and the numbers on the bottom, again, just for illustrative purposes they begin to see, receive a payment of around $1,700. And it goes up and up and up and up. But let's say you want to see what a 5% COLA is going to look like. Well, the first thing to note is on the left-hand side, with that 5% COLA, there's less coming out to you into retirement, but 12, 13, 14 years down the road, you begin to receive a greater amount of benefit due to the compounding effect of that higher COLA percent. So you cross over a threshold and you begin to receive a greater amount of monthly income relative to that 2% COLA. So you can see that there. If you so choose to do a 0% COLA on your MPP, you can see that is a fixed annuity over time. And we also illustrate what the 3% of the 4% COLA would be. Again, I think you can see in this slide, the higher the COLA percent you choose, the lower the initial amount to you, but the greater amount you can receive later on in retirement. Again, another example of speaking to an EY financial planner or your own financial planner, because you want to talk about longevity and health and expenses in the future and those types of things. Family history, you want to kind of include all of that in that conversation. So you choose the annuity that you want to receive. You choose the COLA percent that you want to attach to that annuity that it will go up each year according to that percentage. Please note that you can choose one form of an annuity in the CRSP and a different annuity in MPP. You can choose one COLA percent in CRSP, another COLA percent for MPP. So they can be dealt with separately. Coming back around to MPP, you can leave on account until this required minimum distribution kicks in at age 73, so you can defer it. You have your annuity and COLA options. A little added flexibility for you. You can defer receiving your 65% annuity if for whatever reason you don't need it just yet, or maybe the markets take another tumble and you're not quite comfortable with what the number is for you. You can defer that to a later time, but still take that 35% and roll it over into the UMPIP to start to generate some retirement income from that. So that 35% can still go to UMPIP. That 65% you can annuitize, or you can defer till another time that you want to annuitize. You can roll it over to another retirement plan. It's your account balance. It's fully portable. You can roll it out. Again, you just want to do the analysis on your housing allowance tax exclusion. And there are other distribution options that you'll hear about in the context of the UMPIP. And then lastly, some of you may have the pre-82 plan. It's the Minister's Reserve Pension Fund. This was the plan that was in place prior to the MPP plan coming along. This plan was designed for you to receive an annuity in retirement. And that annuity is based on a formula. It's a formula benefit. But back in the day when it was the active plan, for many of you, if not most of you, a contributions were being put into an account in your name to fund that future annuity payment. And that account has been sitting in the Westpath funds, managed with life stage investment management, and growing over time. So we look at the formula benefit, we look at the account balance. Technically, we call it the defined benefit service money, but it's the account balance that's there behind the scenes in your name, and we look at the two amounts. We go through the annuity algorithm, if you will. We run, we run through the annuity to see what it will look like. The, the formula benefit for the pre-82, you have years of service. So again, clergy, you want your clergy service record to be correct. 
In our example here, we have somebody with 2.5 years of service. There's a past service rate. The past service rate is decided at the annual conference level. So each annual conference has their own past service rate. In our example, it's $600. It comes up with a $1,500 annual benefit. You divide by 12, we get $125 monthly benefit. But let's say that DBSM, that account balance, has grown over all these years and is now worth $75,000. We run that through the annuity algorithm, and we come out with an annual amount of $2,500. Well, we divide that by 12, we get 208.33, and we look at the two numbers, and we decide on our own to give you the greater of those two numbers. So you'll receive the 208.33 as your benefit. But please note that each year we recalculate. So when the past service rate goes up through annual conference, we will continue to recalculate the amount. And if at any time that 125 becomes, let's say, $211, we're going to switch over and begin to give you that $211 monthly benefit and not the lower, in this example, of the 208.33. What does it become? For those who are single, it is a single life annuity. There is no refund. There's no colas. There's no period certain. Benefit ceases upon the death. And then there is a life and survivorship component of, of the pre-82 plan for married participants. Again, at the annual conference level, it is determined as to what the survivorship percentage is going to be. We have some at 70, 75, 85, and 100 percent. So you just want to go back and look at your annual conference to determine what your survivorship percentage is if you're eligible for the pre-82 plan. So now at this time, having gone through all of the employer-provided retirement plans, Cheryl is going to walk us through the UMPIP, United Methodist Personal Investment Plan, the voluntary plan made available to you. Thank you so much, Frank. Great job explaining all the Westpath plans, so we appreciate that. All right, so let's go into that UMPIP. All right, what is it? I think a lot of you know already know this, but it is a defined contribution plan. So it actually accepted uh, funds from your plan sponsors as well as any uh, employers that you have. That could be something that could have put, been put money put into your UMPIP plan, but then also uh, your contributions that was uh, received from payroll deductions. That's money that can go into UMPIP. Now, as far as those investment choices, you actually had that choice to either put in, let's say, um, a percentage of your pay or maybe even a dollar amount. We do recommend you know, that, that percentage amount uh, because as your salary goes up, then your retirement savings goes up as well. Um, but again, you have that option to choose whether or not you wanted it to be self-managed where you do it yourself. Uh, you pick the funds that, are, uh, that you would like to be in or you have life stage in, uh, investment management take care of that for you kind of like putting your accounts on autopilot. If uh, a rebalance is needed, LifeStage will do that and your accounts are taken care of. So that's UMPIP and what it is. Now, as far as putting those personal contributions in, as far as how they go in is gonna determine how they're taxed when they come back out. So let's go through those. You have your before tax, after tax, and Roth. So when you go through um, and have a before tax, then those monies that you put in are, are taxed before. So when you take a distribution out, it's going to be taxed. Okay? One way or the other, it has to be taxed. As far as Roth, Roth is on an after-tax basis. So that whole bucket of money that you have for Roth contributions, those amounts are going to be tax-free in distribution, as well as those earnings on that bucket of money for Roth as well. Now, we also have the option of after-tax. Now, I'll show you in the next slide as far as what the contribution limits are. But if you happen to put money in over the IRS uh, contribution limits for you know, each individual year, then those amounts would be taxed, and then any earnings on that bucket of money would be, uh, would be I'm sorry, the, the amount of the after-tax. It would not be taxed when you take it out, but that earnings on that bucket of money would be taxed. All right, so let's talk about those contribution limits. Again, just go through this really quick because you know, you've already, you're, you're in retirement stage, so you can put in up to $30,000 um, in, in 2023. Now, you could max this out prior to your retirement date as of uh, July 1st, um, so you have that as an option, okay? 
Rollovers, let's talk about these. Rollover, it's not just a trick that I'm trying to teach my dog, Barney. No, rollovers are actually monies that are portable and you can actually move those monies over from a, a prior, uh, previous employer plan. So maybe your second year clergy, or maybe, um, you, maybe you have another account from a, a, a previous employer, or maybe you have a traditional IRA that you'd like to move over. That is certainly something you can do. It does need to come from an IRS qualified plan all right, and, um, and again, this can be done either you know during active years as well as in retirement years as well. It's hopefully uh, I like to think of it as a simple process. Um, you would complete an incoming rollover form, and then you would either email or email it into a Westpath and to have it c uh, completed. I'm actually the one who actually handles all of the rollovers. Uh, I'm the rollover specialist here at Westpath. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, and I can help you with those. All right, so now we're not gonna take a deep dive into all of the funds that we have, but I just wanted to show you this potential return versus the risk scale and how they're generally correlated. So let's talk about the, uh, the stable value fund that was actually in our capital preservation fund. And that actually is the lowest risk, but also the lowest potential for return. Again, you're gonna get a smaller rate of return on those stable value funds, or maybe even those US Treasury inflation protection funds. But as you keep going up and up, up that scale, the highest risk, but also the one with the highest potential return is going to be that international equity fund. So again, we want to just show you these funds, not taking a deep dive into them because we have talked about them before, but just wanted to show you this, um, uh, this chart as, uh, to let you see what they look like. All right, now let's talking about the distribution options uh, for you in retirement status. You have options. Now you could actually take a full lump sum or even a partial lump sum distribution. Again, as Frank had mentioned, you, know, you might want to talk with your tax advisor or EY Financial Planning Services regarding that um, because there can be some ramifications regarding it. But what a lot of our uh, retiree participants do is they actually take what's called cash installment payments. So this is where you can actually tell us how you want or how much money you want to take out each month. And that would be through self-managed. And that could be maybe you, as an example, you tell us that you want maybe $500 for the next four months, but then drop that number down to maybe $300 a month. You can do that. You just need to let our retirement team know that you want to make that change. Or possibly you want to use life stage retirement income and actually have our systems project how much you could receive per month to hopefully potentially last your lifetime. It may not exactly last that long, but it's, you know, with all of our calculations, we're trying to get as close as we can. We want you to be able to retire, uh, to enjoy your retirement years. So we don't want you to take the money out too slow or take the money out too fast. We, we, I kind of like to call this the Goldilocks approach. You want to kind of you know, make sure that you are getting exactly what you need so that you can re and enjoy uh, all this time, new time that you're going to be having. Please note that since the UMPIP, like Frank had mentioned on these other um, defined contribution accounts, that any remaining balance in this account balance fund will go to your beneficiaries. So again, another reason to make sure that those beneficiaries are updated um, you, as often as they can be. We know that sometimes if you have your children as you know, a contingent annuitant or um, as uh, secondary beneficiaries, that sometimes they move or you know, they're going all different places. So make sure that those addresses are updated in our system. All right, so regarding required min minimum distributions, Frank had alluded to these a little bit earlier as well. You have the option to leave all of your accounts on file with Westpath until the age of 73, which is the required minimum distribution or RMD. Now this amount was just raised uh, from December of 2022. You actually can uh, begin these benefits no later than April 1st of the following year after you turn 73. Okay? If you decide to wait until that uh, following year, then make sure you're aware that you will receive actually two um, payments during that year. You'll have to receive one when you turn 73 and then another one by the end of the year, which that would be your requirement distribution 
using December 31st balances of the prior year. Now again, all of these um, benefits uh, applies to all the defined contribution benefits, but then if you haven't already taken your defined benefit contributions, your annuities, you must receive those at this time. Okay? So you have lots of options for your money. Now I'm going to take it, take it back over to Frank, who's going to talk about the life stage services. <coughs> Thank you, Cheryl. There you go. So I'll spend the uh, next several minutes talking to you about the life stage services that we have. We're going to talk about life stage investment management in a little more detail, and then life stage retirement income. So life stage investment management, we have spoken about it a couple of times today already. This is a program that we have at Westpath where you're asking us to tailor the investment elections for you over time to, into, and through your retirement. It's an optionalized, personalized investment management tool for your accounts. We look at you, we look at your age, you look at what your Social Security benefits, whether you're going to be receiving those or not, other Westpath benefits, your expected benefits commencement date, and also your risk tolerance. With Life Stage Investment Management, we'd like you to tell us what your risk tolerance is in terms of being comfortable in the investment markets. Are you a conservative investor, a moderate investor, or an aggressive investor? And there's a bit of a swing in terms of how that investment allocation is going to be set up based on your risk tolerance. And you can change your risk tolerance over time using benefits access. And then we set the fund allocation for you. But we don't just set it and forget it. We manage it for you over time, and we do it in two ways. The first is when we get you set up, and let's say you're 55 years old and you have a 70-30 investment allocation, the equity markets, those two U.S. equity funds, we have 70%. Our bond funds, or income funds, we have 30. As we age up, the amount of the equity comes down and the amount of the fixed income goes up, and we'll continue to do that over time. We need equity and risk because we need growth, but as we're getting into and through retirement, we need more of the income side because we're paying installment payments to you or income payments to you. So we'll do that. But during the course of the year, four times quarterly off of your birthday, we'll look at the account and determine whether or not you are where we want you to be at a particular point in time, let's say 70-30. And if you have gone off of that because markets change every day and you went to like an 80-20, we're going to get you back to 70-30, or you went to 60-40, we're going to sell off 10% of the income side, get it back to 30, come back in on the other side. And because we manage it that way throughout the course of the year and throughout the course of time, there is a potential for a higher rate of internal rate of return in that portfolio, if you will, because we're actively looking after that account. We're not just setting it and forgetting it and coming back five years later and resetting it again. So we're, we stay with that program through out. On your participant statements, you may see a page full of interfund transfers and not know what that's all about. That is what that is all about. And then we have Life Stage Retirement Income. This is a program that helps you manage your DC plans th through your retirement. This is something that if you're in Life Stage Retirement Income, you're staying in Life Stage Investment Management, we're going to keep those two together to make sure they work in tandem. And again, we're going to be looking at you, your age, spouse's age, your risk tolerance and the like, just to ensure that we understand where your account is now and how we can get that account to provide for you monthly installment payments to last through your retirement. And I am permitted to say that this thing is structured in such a way to have a high probability of success to provide installment payments for you through your retirement. And we do it in such a way where we calculate an amount going into retirement, and each year we do a recalculation with the intention and the practice of giving you increases over time in that monthly installment payment to help you keep pace with purchasing power. Now, last year we introduced two new features to the program, the Social Security Bridge and the Longevity Income Protection Contract. I'm going to be going through those with you in some detail. Now you can see in the middle of this slide that it allows you to set money aside for expenses. Please note that you can take some, let's say 10-15% of your account balances and put it over into an account to use as a reserve fund or an emergency fund or a vacation fund. And you can have that there for you. And then you can start to move that money back in if you so choose. You go into life stage retirement income, you're not locked in for life. 
with your annuities, I mentioned irrevocable. Here, not, you're not. You can self-manage, you can self-manage and go back. More options, more flexibility for you. And if you so choose to use the Social Security Bridge, we're going to additionally reallocate your money to ensure that there is money put to the side in the Stable Value Fund to pay income to you if you so choose the Social Security Bridge. So what is this bridge? Basically, it supplements your income in your early years of retirement by allowing you to defer your Social Security benefits. Many of you probably know this, maybe some don't, but each one of us in the Social Security program, based on our year of birth, has a full retirement age. So my full retirement age is 67. For each year that you defer receiving your Social Security benefits, you get an 8% increase in the amount of Social Security income that you would receive. So for me, that would be 24% increase in my Social Security benefits. So if I want to do that to get the greatest Social Security benefits, but I need income for my monthly income needs or annual income needs, I can use my account balances with Westpath to supplement that amount over time until that kicks in. So you would tell us what's your Social Security amount, and we'll pay, pay that to you while you're in that deferring status. Once you attain age 70, it doesn't have to be 70, it could be 69, 68, but once you begin to receive your Social Security benefit, you let us know that, and we're going to level off what's coming out of your account balances. We're no longer going to take the as-if Social Security amount out of your account balances and just pay you that initial amount that we calculated that gets increased over time. And because we do it that way, that allows for that sustainability of your account balances to last through your retirement. Again, the, the investment allocation is adjusted where we, we know we want to conservatively park the amount that we're going to provide to you as that Social Security bridge until such time that you re begin to receive Social Security and we level off what's coming out of your account balances. If you have not yet, another thing to do, and it's on that checklist, I believe, is to set up a My Social Security account at ssa.gov. You want to give yourself 10 or 15 minutes of quiet time to do that. It's a little bit more involved than something like even Benefit Access. But once you get to ssa.gov, you can see your statements, you can see the amount of Social Security benefits that will be made available to you upon your full retirement age. Also, we have a longevity income protection contract. It's a deferred annuity contract. It will provide lifetime income to you. However, the way this contract works is going into retirement. As you're making your benefit elections on benefit access, you're going to be presented with an amount available to you to purchase this longevity income protection contract. You purchase it going into retirement, but it begins to pay to you as a lifetime stream of income when you attain age 80. It's a life in 70% survivorship annuity. You attain age 80. You now have another stream of guaranteed lifetime income for you, you and your spouse. And because we're now kicking in that contract, we reduce and level off the amount coming out of your account balances again to help with that sustainability of those account balances to last through your retirement. These two options, the Social Security Bridge, the Longevity Income Protection, you can choose none of them, one or the other, or both. As you're making your elections on benefit access, and hopefully you're starting to model that right now, you'll see what is available to you. Plug in your Social Security amount, and then you can start to play around a little bit with how much you want to use for life stage retirement income, whether you want the contract or not, and you can start to see the, you know, the benefits of taking advantage of all these programs in tandem or how it works best for you relative to your particular situation. That bullet there about uh, group insurance rates basically means it's a group, it's, it, it's dealt with like an employer group plan, so it keeps fees and expenses low, so you get more out of this contract over time once it begins to pay at your age. 80. As far as receipt of your monthly retirement income is concerned, we do ask you when you're making your benefit elections to give us your banking information, your bank, your checking or savings account, number, routing number, all of that, and we will uh, provide to you that income. Your annuity income will arrive on the first business day of the month. Your account balances installment, either self-management installment or life saves retirement income, will come to you on the second business day of the month. However, just note that for the first, for the seven one of this year for our retiree class, there's a lot of activity, there's a lot of internal reconciliation and controls that we have to put into place. This year, July 1st is a Saturday, then we have Monday, July 3rd, followed by a holiday of July 4th. 
So by the time we get through that internal reconciliation and control process and get that out for the first payment, it'll probably be more towards the end of that week, July the 7th. But uh, thereafter, first business day, your annuity, second business day, your account balance installment payment. <coughs> Excuse me. We will ask you if you're taking your uh, distributions from your accounts or if you're going to settle into an RMD type of situation to provide to us how you want your taxes to be withheld. If you don't give us anything and don't direct us, then we're going to have to, by law, hold back or withhold 20% of your partial or full distributions, and then if it's an RMD, 10% of that. So even if you don't want taxes to be withheld, you have to tell us that. You have to give us direction for zero. If we default it to zero, well, we're actually going to take the 20 and the 10%. Now, that gets work, worked out when you do your annual taxes each year, but still, just know that you're not going to be receiving potentially what you think you are because we will be holding money back. As far as the housing allowance exclusion is concerned, the housing allowance benefit remains, the tax advantage remains to you in retirement. It's a little bit different in retirement. The IRS has you determine three numbers. Three numbers have to be determined, and it's the lowest or the least of the three numbers is what you can use for your housing allowance that calendar year. The first number is, well, what did I get from Westpath? You're going to know that because in January of a given year, we're going to send to you a 1099-R tax form that's going to say, in the year that just ended, this is what we provided. The second is your actual housing expenses. So you want to keep that number as north as possible. Put everything you can on there. Not just the big ticket items like mortgage or rent and utilities, but even the fantastic that you bought in Walmart that's eligible for the housing allowance exclusion. You want it to be as north as possible because it's the lowest of the three numbers. And then third, if you own your residence, what is the fair rental value of that residence in your neighborhood fully furnished plus utilities? Here we recommend you go to a local realtor, get a comparison letter, they call it a comp letter, find out how much you can rent your place for. Now you have three numbers. And of the three numbers, it's the lowest or the least of the three numbers that you can use to come right off the top of your overall household income with the rest going into your tax filing season. So, for example, it's a simple example, you receive $24,000 from Westpath, your actual housing is $20,000. On an annual basis, you can rent your place for $21,000. Well, the lowest or the least of the, those three is the $20,000. And now $4,000 is what becomes a taxable amount. But that's just going into the process where you have other exclusions, deductions, and credits available through the tax code. So maybe all of that won't necessarily be taxed either. It's available to retired clergy. It's not applicable to the surviving spouse unless it is a clergy couple. <clears throat> the housing allowance exclusion worksheet, if you've received it at webinars, seminars, or if it's attached right now, I'm not sure if it is on the back, on the fourth paragraph, there's some language we provide that says just stick this on your 1040 just in case that somebody's looking at it, they're not sure what they're seeing. Oh, housing allowance is involved here, and that just kind of moves it along. And then lastly, that refer to the section in your conference journal. You don't have to do anything about declaring your income as eligible, your, your income from Westpath is eligible for the housing allowance exclusion. Your annual conference, at annual conference, in annual journal, has language that says, in the next calendar year, what our retired appointees receive from Westpath is income and retirement is eligible for the housing allowance exclusion. We recommend this year, find that resolution, print it off of the PDF that you probably received, put it in your tax folder. But after that, you don't have to do that. That gets done on a rolling basis over time through annual conference. There is a retiree death benefit provided through the Comprehensive Protection Plan, or CPP. The eligibility, well, you have to be eligible to receive CRSP benefits. And then there's an enrollment period. If you're enrolled in CPP for 12 of the last 15 years or were an active participant in CPP for 25 years. So again, looking at your clergy service record, talking to your contacts at annual conference, just to confirm that you're eligible for the death benefit. The way the death benefit works is we have the words here, retiree, retiree spouse, kind of the clergy person can be a synonym. The retiree passes away. The surviving spouse receives a death benefit of $20,808. If the retiree spouse passes before the retiree or clergy person, then that clergy person receives a benefit of $15,606. In the instance where the retiree passed, the surviving spouse received a benefit, now the surviving spouse passes away. 
then there is an amount of 10,404 that will go to the surviving spouse's named designated beneficiaries. And in the unfortunate circumstance where an eligible child may pass away, either the surviving spouse or retiree will receive a flat amount of $8,323. These are flat dollar amounts that you can see here. They get increased at annual conference. So we're expecting an increase of two, maybe three, but I think 2% at the next annual conference. So they will go up over time, but right now heading into your retirement, that is what is available as the death benefit. And now lastly, we're gonna talk about participant resources. I'm gonna steal the show here and just use my favorite word. There is a plethora of resources that are available to you. We're kind of just scratching the surface here. Sometimes it feels like a little bit of bureaucratic cha-cha getting bounced around, but in tandem, all of these resources are in place foundationally to help you think through, get into, and then make it through retirement. These resources remain available to you through your retirement. So with that, Cheryl, West Path Participant all right. Resources. All right, we're just about there. So I, Frank, I love your word, plethora, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and cha-cha. Bureaucratic cha-cha. <laughs> cha-cha. All right, so let's finish this up strong here. So um, before we go into the retirement uh, or the participant resources, let's talk about our new event that's coming up. Live from West Path it is coming up on Wednesday, May 17th. This is something that uh, it's, it's a new event, clergy event, and this is something we're all very excited about. Talking about your benefits, well-being, and investments. Um, it's going to be in a brand new format and a new environment. So go ahead, scan that QR code or actually go to westpath.org and actually look for events and look for why, live from Westpath. We're very excited about this. If you can't tell, we're very excited. Um, but you know, definitely sign up for this and, and actually partake in this, uh, in this event. All right, so now let's talk about the, the first uh, service or benefit resource that we have or participant resource we have is EY Financial Planning Services. We cannot say enough good things about EY Financial Planning Services. They have been one of our business partners for over 16 years. They can help with any financial question that you may have. Now, these are actual confidential professional count financial counselings that are provided to you at no cost. And that's right, no cost to you. EY is a, is a for-profit company, but <laughs> Westpath actually pays for these services out of our operating expenses that are paid for by the funds. So you can actually call them up and talk to them about for unlimited hours for, about any financial planning advice you may need. And this is, includes everyone in your household, all your financial income. It is not, they, they do not sell you anything. They're just giving you advice and guidance on what is best for you. Should you maybe take that 5% COLA or is 2% uh, good for you? Um, do you want to have that benefit um, of 100% for, your, for your surviving spouse or is 70% enough? Looking at the overall situation, that's what they'll be able to do and guide you on that advice. Don't need to enroll, you're already in it. So if you haven't already, please contact EY and they'll be able to help you through any questions you have. No questions too big or too small. If you have questions regarding buying or leasing a car, they're there to help with that. Financial plan, debt management, all those things they can help with. All right, I like to say this is a wonderful slide to take a picture of, okay? Now, we will be sending out all of these slides to you, so you don't have to, but this is a great slide to take a picture of. It has all of the um, pertinent information regarding our participant resources, our participant solutions, great great team of people that we have, benefits access, EY, but then for our retiring class, our ITRs for July 1st, Westpath Retirement Team. They are here to give you all the information or answer any question that you may have. Dedicated team specialized in just answering more of your questions that you'll be having. And because we're so happy with this team, and they're happy with all the questions they get from you, we want to show them. So here is the team. Look at all those smiling faces. They are eagerly looking forward to getting your questions and helping you through this next chapter in your life. We also have the Westpath one-on-one consultations. Now you can meet with a Westpath benefit educator 
Frank, myself, but this is Todd, who's actually in the laptop there. You can meet with Todd Creveson or the manager of benefit education, Bob Christoffel. This is the link that you can go to. This will actually be included in the slides and the recording link that we'll send out as well. But this is a link that you can actually um, utilize. You can actually uh, ask for this your specific date and time and sign up for this 30-minute consultation. We will help you go through the benefit education uh, process, um, go through a benefit projection, and actually maybe help you through any of those um, those next steps that you have in going through and, and, and looking up your benefits and requesting your benefits. So we can help you through that. All right, wouldn't be a Westpath webinar without action planning steps. So again, if you haven't already, please register for benefits access. It's good to go out there now so that you can actually play around with it, become more familiar with it before you actually have to do your benefits. So again, onlinebenefitsaccess.org or westpat.org, upper right-hand corner is that um, benefits access box. Again, we've talked about this a couple times. Review your beneficiaries. They change. We want to make sure that the addresses are updated. Go out there through benefits access to do that. <coughs> you can actually, again, pull up your own benefit re, um, retirement projection run that it's just a forecast it's not going to be what's actually uh, going to be what's paid to you but again know approximately what you're going to be getting in retirement and again sign or sign up for those benefit education consultations and and call ey what we want you to know and understand is that there are people here we you have a lot of people who are here to help you and this is just one of those options that uh, this webinar is giving you where we're giving you all those other options and knowing that people are here to help you through this different change in your time so this brings us to the end of our webinar we want to frank frank and i want to thank you very much for being here today and we wish you all the best in the next chapter of your life. Again, any questions, feel free to make sure that they're in the questions box. We will answer them before the, by the end of the week. But thanks again for joining us today, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Congratulations.